Hello, friends and family, and welcome to our Boring Meditation Stuff for Friday, October 23rd. This video will close out this little series on truth, and I'm going to be uh, picking apart <laughs> a phrase that I have been hearing for the past, I don't know, five years. Um, and the phrase is, your truth. So we kind of began the series talking about personal truth, and then we transitioned into talking about um, truth at larger scales within organizations, governments, corporations, that sort of thing. And now I want to bring it back to the individual, but not necessarily internal. So your ability to be honest internally during meditation, and this is, in effect, this is your truth. Um, air quotes, I'm not sure why I'm doing that. <laughs> um, but the context in which I hear this phrase is usually an argument, uh, usually on the internet, which is the best place to have an argument. Um, and It tends to be people's personal experiences projected as opinion they hope for other people to hold. And through this process, the phrasing my truth comes out well, I'm just speaking my truth and the phrasing I, I understand why people pursue this idea um, that people have very different life experiences and very different perspectives um, but the phrasing itself is frustrating because it is in and of itself dishonest. There is no such thing as a personal truth. There are no such things as multiple truths. There is only one truth. None of us know what it is, <laughs> but it's out there. It's out there to be had. Um, There is a singular truth which runs adjacent to time. It is every accumulated fact over the entire expanse of time up until now. And that is all. That is the only truth there really is. And so my truth, my individual truth, is the same as everyone else's. My perception is different. I will have an interaction with someone else. I will have an interaction and someone else will observe or comment on it. And their perception will inherently be different than mine. This is the case. <laughs> there, there is no shared truth between two human beings. No two human beings believe precisely the same thing. And I think that in the same way as our era seems to be leaning on partial truths, as I talked about with respect to learning Hindi and being vague, <laughs> and the tools of vagueness baked into different languages, um, and our politicians and our leaders and our businesses, which are driving the economy and driving society, driving humanity forward, that there is this tendency 
there seems to be a modern tendency to want to believe that our experiences, our perceptions, are true. They are not. What I see, what I hear, what I experience is fundamentally inaccurate. There are, of course, cases where there is true injustice, true oppression, true violence, physical, verbal, otherwise, in which this idea of personal truth, this misconception of personal truth, is used to explain to someone who does not appreciate harm being done, that harm is being done. But I think that in the process of repeatedly using this terminology, my truth and your truth, as if there were two, it harms us as a species, actually. Humanity, collectively, with each individual who chooses to believe that they are experiencing some sort of fundamental truth through their sensory input, is really dangerously deluding themselves. And in the process, they are dangerously deluding other people around them who are going to learn from this behavior. The sense doors, however you count them, five, six, seven, <laughs> um, this is sort of five external sense bases and one or two internal. These cannot provide truth. They can provide an approximation of truth, but it is important for us to always revisit the idea that this is perception. These are our tools of perception, and that our perception is a lie. It's a lie before it gets to us. We are not capable of interpreting raw truth. Raw truth is... <laughs> it's like a raw data stream of what uh, quarks or strings or, or sub other subatomic particle. There, there is no way for a human being uh, open-eyed walking through the world experiencing it to experience raw truth that's not something we have access to and even the truth that we have digested from the outside was probably more honest more true when we were a baby right <laughs> once we once our eye fog from cleared from our eyes and we were able to actually see Oh, okay, yes, I'm seeing the world. This is what it looks like. I'm hearing the world. This is what it sounds like. I'm feeling the world. This is what it feels like when I touch it. They're getting a raw experience because they have no background to base it on. And they're not digesting it. They're not computing it at all. It's just raw experience straight into the brain. Oh, okay, yeah, fuzzy things feel like this and rough things feel like this. Sour things taste like this and salty things taste like this, <laughs> right? Those are true experiences, raw experiences, and they don't really have a whole lot of meaning to them. We ascribe the meaning. And um, I think that it would be useful for us to pursue the idea of having flawed, broken perception, and also that we can, to some extent, revisit uh, raw perception, immediate perception, that that is the thing that we can come back to. But I will try to address that in a future video. Um, one, a little less critical <laughs> of terminology, um, but this terminology I feel is, uh, it's not helping anybody. Um, so rather than my truth and your truth, my perception and your perception. 
I hope that everyone is taking good care of themselves and in the way of not causing anyone else any harm, that everyone is taking good care of everyone around them. I will talk to you all tomorrow, Saturday. Maybe we'll start talking about hallucination. <laughs> Goodbye.